Welcome everyone. In my presentation I would like to introduce our three months progress and the initiated projects. My name is Kinga Kovac. Currently I'm a PhD student at the Center for Translational Medicine and I'm a second year pediatric resident at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology of Semmelweis University at the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit. So our vision is that the focus in neonatal care should be on eliminating as many complications as possible. And that's why our aim is to investigate neonatal risk factors. To achieve these aims, here are our specific goals. Uh, our first project is to investigate the uh, fetal inflammatory response, uh, the role of fetal inflammatory response in adverse outcomes of preterm neonates. And our second project is uh, to investigate the effect of uh, an additional dose of caffeine citrate before extubation. Our first project is uh, going to be a systematic review and a meta-analysis, the prognostic role of concomitant histopathologic inflammatory response with choreomnitis in adverse outcomes of preterm neonates. A little explanation to this term, histopathologic fetal inflammatory response is the inflammation of the umbilical cord and its vessels in the Wharton jelly and uh, the chorionic vessels in the chorionic plate. And choreomnitis is the inflammation of the, the other, the maternal part of the placenta. And here I would like to show you some histologic pictures where you can see choreomnitis and uh, choreomnitis with uh, chorionic vasculitis. And here are uh, the inflammation of the three vessels of the umbilical cord and the Wharton jelly. Uh, maternal inflammation is one of the leading causes of preterm deliveries, and its common histolo uh, histological findings are these chorionitis and phonicitis. Several studies have already showed the association between, early, uh, between different adverse uh, neonatal outcomes and chorionitis. However, the, the, in this equation, the impact of phonicitis is still unclear. Our aim is to investigate the role of additional phonicities with choreomnitis in wide range of outcomes. Our clinical question is which outcomes are associated with the presence of additional phonicities. Uh, our population will be preterm neonates or very low birth weight neonates. Our exposure group will contain neonates with choreomnitis and phonicities as well. Uh, meanwhile, our, co our com comparison group will contain neonates with choreomnitis alone. And we would like to check a lot of outcomes, both short and long-term outcomes as well. It's, gonna, it's going to be a prognostic study, and our implication uh, is a prognostic factor, a prognostic factor that can contribute to making therapeutic decisions. For example, if we found strong association between early onset sepsis or, and uh, phonicities, we can, we can use this to, it can help us to decide whether to start an antibiotic therapy or not. Uh, our systematic search was conducted in these four databases in the 17th, on 17th of October with this search key. And uh, we started our selection with the pool of almost 8,000 articles. Our second project is a protocol of a randomized control trial, uh, the effect of additional pre-extubational loading dose of caffeine citrate. A uh, little background to this topic. Uh, one of the most common uh, indication of intubation or reintubation are frequent episodes of apnea. And since the CAP trial, which is the caffeine for apnea prematurity trial, there is an evidence that caffeine administration reduces continued apneas and associated with a shortened duration of ventilation. Uh, clinicians try to avoid mechanical ventilation. However, uh, there are cases when it's inevitable. But in those cases, uh, they try to remove the endotracheal tube as soon as possible because of the complications such as BPD and its long-term sequel like asthma, reduced lung function or pulmonary hypertension. So our aim is to investigate the beneficial effect of a higher level of caffeine in this quite vulnerable period of the neonates, the peri period. Our clinical question is, does additional loading dose of caffeine citrate one hour before plant extubation reduces the extubation failure? 
Our population will be preterm neonates born before the 32nd gestational <coughs> week is completed and had been mechanically ventilated for at least 48 hours. Our intervention will be an additional loading dose of caffeine citrate and uh, in the control group the neonates will receive the routine dosing regime. Our primary outcome is reintubation within the next 48 hours. Uh, our implication is that caffeine can decrease extubation failure and mechanical, uh, mechanical ventilation day, and thus BPD. And this study can contribute to finding the optimal dosing regimes. Uh, here are eligibility criteria. Uh, we will include now needs according to gestational age, uh, the date of the extubation, and uh, the length of the ventilation and we will exclude neonates with uh, major congenital anomalies, uh, heterops fetalis or fetal arrhythmias or asphyxia. It's going to be a two-arm study with the intervention of 20 milligram per kilogram uh, loading dose of caffeine citride before the extubation. And uh, beside our primary outcome, which is the extubation failure and, uh, or uh, reintubation within the next 48 hours. We have secondary outcomes as well, such as frequency of apneas, uh, heart rate, gastric residuals, or blood pressure. Uh, here is a quick overview of our uh, projects and the estimated uh, submission dates. And thank you for your attention. I brought a quote related to my last project, so I exist on caffeine level 10. At the, your second project, you mentioned the two numbers. One is that you plan to give caffeine one hour uh, before the extubation, and the second one is that you plan to follow up the patients for 48 hours. And I'm eager to know what is behind these numbers. First, uh, we give caffeine, uh, caffeine one hour before the planned extubation because uh, caffeine has its peak level uh, between uh, 30 minutes to two hours. So that's why we chose one hour. And about uh, 48 hours uh, after uh, is that, according to study and our experience at the unit, uh, eight, 70 to 80 percent of the reintubation happens in the next 48 hours. Did you think about uh, doing a meta-analysis uh, before your second project on the same answer, uh, question and answers? In this specific uh, way, uh, this clinical trial, I found one similar, and it, uh, it used a maintenance dose one hour before the extubation. So in this topic, I, I could not make a meta-analysis. Meta Do you think a single dose caffeine is enough, or is it not uh, rational uh, to continue, perhaps, uh, after uh, extubation also, so. Yeah, uh, yeah, there are studies with uh, higher dosage of uh, loading both and maintenance doses. Of Many pain. times, so, yeah. Yeah, there, there are, but we are interested in this specific occasion, in this, uh, in this specific event uh, like extubation failure. Does it help in this to prevent it or not? Are there any, any drugs or any, any studies uh, with other drugs uh, to, to prevent these uh, problems or only caffeine? Before there was, uh, uh, like uh, a few decades ago, they started it, the, whole, uh, uh, the whole study with the aminophilins. And, but now it's, uh, today because of the side effects, it's uh, obvious that uh, it's an evidence base that we use caffeine.